Hey people, in this tutorial I want to show you some great ways how we can creatively and musically use the hi-hat in the context of the whole drum set. To do this, you should master the basic techniques, meaning you're able to control the pedal from the whole leg as well as from the ankle. If you still lack this foundation, then please watch the previous video again, where I go through it all with you in detail. I'll link that for you here and the link to the whole playlist on foot technique on the drum set can be found at the description. My goal is for this series to be a real basic course for you to work your way through and get your drumming technique on a solid foundation. If it helps you, then please also recommend it to others. And before we get straight into it, you should definitely subscribe to my other social media channels where I will keep you up to date, for example, if I'm giving a workshop near you. And now, let's jump right in. Before I give you a few concrete exercise concepts for coordination and balance, I will first show you a few tricks and special techniques as promised. The simplest of these is the hi-hat choke. For this, you hit the open hi-hat and then quickly close it again. Try it out and play around with the spacing. Make the gap wider or as narrow as possible. You can also do this within a specific rhythm. Many drummers like to play this as a kind of embellishment of sorts, playing a groove on the right cymbal, playing the hi-hat and quarter notes with the foot, and then playing the last 16th note right before the quarter note, so you get this choking effect automatically. And the choke is also often combined with the bass drum. The choke is a great way to add an emphasis. For example, when you make, want to make a short accent and don't have enough time to hit the crash cymbal and then mute it with your hand. The second is the splash, meaning the cymbals hitting each other and then resonating. You can do that very controlled heel down and I sometimes use that when I play it as an ostinato, for example in a quiet solo part. Of course heel up is a bit louder again with a clearer attack. You can simply hit the pedal flat with your foot. Then you will definitely get the sound we want, even though it is not the most elegant solution. But it does the job and the background noise is negligible. The somewhat more correct variant is not that difficult either. You play a normal hit, but do not press the ball of your foot into the pedal, but roll backwards from there. You just have to experiment a bit until you find your pedal's sweet spot. It can help if you push forward a bit so that your ankle goes straight down but your toes are pointing forward so you slide a little bit over the pedal. The splash can be a really great effect and practicing it will definitely improve your pedal control. You can even extend it and play it alternately with short notes. To do this, all you have to do is perform the movement once forwards and once backwards. First drop your leg, roll your foot while pushing forward and then use your calf muscle to push your knee up and pull your foot back. This can be a really great ostinato, which I also like to use in song intros or in solos. Some then play the splash with the heel briefly losing contact with the pedal. The same applies as before, if it doesn't cause any background noise and as long as you're relaxed, everything's okay. And then there is a very common way of playing the hi-hat that also uses such a movement. We're used to tapping our feet to the beat. But sometimes we don't want to play all the beats with the hi-hat. For example, only the two and the four. Then you just roll your foot so the heel hits the ground exactly on the one. And on the two, you play from the ankle and push your leg up and so on. Make sure that you don't stomp your heel into the ground. This will make excess noise and actually hurt a lot in the long run.
So this way of playing channels the urge to tap your foot on all quarter notes in a musical way and is very commonly used especially in traditional jazz. So this way of playing is ideal if you want to learn authentic jazz playing which is basically the origin of modern drum set playing. And now at the end, a few specific exercises for you how to train your independence and balance. Because in order to use all these great possibilities of the hi-hat, we have to be able to play it independently of the other limbs and remain in balance even when both feet are playing. There's also an entire video on balance later in this series. What follows now are a few easy practice concepts that you can and should of course adapt. You can use them to practice the different techniques I showed you in context. Number one, if you play exercises that don't involve playing the hi-hat, let your foot just play the beat, the quarter notes. It's more difficult at first if you're not used to it, but in the long run it actually gives you an additional help to keep in time. Second, play both feet alternately in unison and as single strokes. So for example, four beats of quarter notes at the same time and then four beats of eighth notes in alternation, once leading with the right and once with the left foot. Third, do the exact same thing while playing a simple accompaniment with your hands. This is already very demanding for your balance, so make sure that you stay seated straight. Fourth, we play mixed rhythms with our hired foot. So, just take a simple reading exercise and play it on the hi-hat with your foot first on its own and then in combination with a simple groove, maybe on the right cymbal. You can also extend this by playing all the long notes as a splash. Yes, this actually is very, very difficult because we are not used to doing this. It challenges our coordination, especially because usually we just play quarter notes or something very simple on the hi-hat. But that means that here we have a completely new means of musical expression and at the same time you challenge your independence. So much for a short introduction to hi-hat technique and a few exercises to make the foot more independent. Because playing the hi-hat with the foot is unfortunately all too often just an automatism and is mostly limited to the job of the timekeeper. But we still have many possibilities for musical expression. Learn these techniques and use the sounds they can create.
I hope this video helped you on your personal way. If so, then please be so honest and think about what it's worth to you and put something in the donation box. You can find the link in the description. If you still have questions, write them to me in the comments or send me a short recording because I will soon make another video in which I will be answering all your questions. If you see this later and that video is already up, that's one more reason to subscribe right now and turn on the notification bell so you will always know when there's a new video because every now and then I will do such a Q&A video again. See you on the next one. Until then, take care and bye bye.